Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to be talking about the next mode of inheritance called multiple alleles. So we're going to start out by talking about what the heck that even is. Um, if you have something that's a multiple allele, it means that rather than having like a dominant and a recessive or two different versions of the trait, there's actually more versions. So rather than being like blue eye versus brown eye, there's actually multiple different things. So the two different types of multiple allele examples that we're going to be looking at in really great detail in this chapter is we're going to be looking at fruit fly eyes. They have four different colors of eyes that they could have. And then we also talk about blood type in humans because you can have type A, type B, type AB, type O. So we're going to go through the eye color for fruit flies first or Drosophila. So you guys already have this in your notes written for you. The four different alleles that control eye color. I use E1, 2, 3, and 4. It's because wild type, which is red, is the most dominant of the four. And white is the least dominant. So I use these numbers because 1 is the most dominant, then 2, then 3, then 4. So if a fly has red eyes, there's actually a whole bunch of different options for their genotype. As long as they have one E1, they have red eyes because it's the most dominant. So it can be E1, E1, or E1, E2, E1, E3, or E1, E4. All of them, all of these options would be carriers of either apricot, honey, or white, but they would still have wild type eyes or red eyes because one is the most dominant of the numbers. Moving down into apricot, Apricot is the second most dominant color, so it can't have any E1s, but it can have E2 or below. So E2, 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 E3, E2, E4. So again, these two of the three options are carriers of honey or white. As long as they have one E2, they're apricot, but not any E1s because the E1 would overpower the E2. And then moving down into the honey colored, they have to have at least one E3 but nothing above that. So no E1s, no E2s. So it can be E3, E3, or E3, E4. This one is a carrier of the white. And if the fly has white eyes, they only get one option in order for their genotype to work. So they can only be E4, E4, and that's the only color that has one option. So if we we're going to do a question looking at Drosophila eyes, Okay, let's take a look at what if we had a honey-colored heterozygous fly. Well, looking on the last slide, if they're honey and they're heterozygous, they would have to be E3, E4, cross with a white fly. The only option for that is E4, E4. So my genotypes of my parents are going to be E3, E4. That's the heterozygous honey. And E4, E4 is the white fly. When we separate the gametes, Let's just pretend like the E3, E4 is the female. So those are the eggs that she would create. And then the sperm that the male creates would only have E4s in them. When I slot that into my Punnett square and cross them over, I end up getting two that are honey and two that are white. So my ratio is a one to one between honey and white. So that is one example. Now I also have an example where it gives you all of the offspring that the two flies create and you have to use that information to figure out what the actual letters for the parents are to figure out what color eyes would be. So I'm going to look and see in this row the two numbers that are common between the two. There are two E1s. There's an E1 right here and there's an E1 right here. So I know that this right here has to be an E1. Down here we have E3 and E3. So this has to be E3. So I'm going to slot that in. On top here, I have E1, E2, or E2, E3. So the only common between the two is E2, E2. So I know this has to be E2 up here. And then this one right here is the only common number is 3. So this one up here has to be E3. So that means that my parents, I have E2, E3, which would mean that that one is apricot. This one, E1, E3, is wild type because it has a 1. Wild type is red. So my parents would have wild type eyes and apricot. And that's how I do questions talking about flies. Now moving on to the blood typing 
Blood type is an example of two different modes of inheritance. So I have up here saying that it's codominance because it not only is a multiple allele, um, but it also is codominant with each other. So I'll explain what I mean later. So if you remember from bio 20, um, in blood typing, when we talk about blood typing, you have markers on the surface of your blood cells, depending on the type of blood that you have. So we talk about A markers and B markers. Someone who has type A, B has both. Someone who has type O has no markers. Okay, so this is an example of multiple alleles, and it has three different alleles that we can have. So it can either be capital I A, capital I B, or lowercase i are my options for letters. You always have two letters, so just different combinations of those three letters are going to be our genotypes. And when I look at the capital letters versus the lowercase, the capital letters are co-dominant with each other, so that's how we end up with type AB blood. You have both A and B present there, so you end up with both of those markers. The lowercase i is recessive to the capital I's. So I will explain how we end up with certain blood types. So if you have type A or B or A, B or O, okay, what would their genotype be based on that? Your guys' table in your notes is the opposite, so just make sure you're writing it in the right column. So if you have type A, you can be capital I, A, capital I, A, or you can be capital I, A, lowercase I, because remember, capital I is dominant over lowercase. If you're type B, you could do the same thing just with B's connected to the I's. So capital I B, capital I B, or capital I B lowercase I. And then the next one is capital I A, capital I B, that would be type A B. And when you have two lowercase I's, that's type O. So type O is the most recessive of all of the options compared to type A, type B, or A B. So let's look at what this looks like in an actual example. So it says we have a person with type AB and a person with O. So I know AB has to be capital I A, capital I B, and type O only can be lowercase I, lowercase I. So if I look at the gametes they create, we have one with a capital A, one with the capital I B, and then the two sperm would be lowercase I's. Put that into my Punnett square table and take a look at what I get for offspring. I end up getting half of them are gonna be type A and half of them are type B. So I have a one-to-one -one ratio between type A and B. At the bottom of your guys' page, you have another example. This is just showing kind of a hypothetical situation, two of them. So I have in the first example, a mom who has type A blood, a dad, we don't know his blood type, but we know the baby's type is type B. So some of them might have options. I know for blood type A, you can either be capital I A, capital I A, or capital I A, lowercase i. But this baby is type B. So those are the two options for B. The only one that actually makes sense for mom to be, if she had this genotype, her baby would have to have at least one capital I A, and it doesn't. So we know that her genotype would have to be this one in order to have a baby that has B blood. And it would be impossible for this baby to have capital I B, capital I B, because that means that the baby's mom would have had to have at least one capital I B to pass that on to her offspring. So we know the baby's genotype has to be this, and they are getting this lowercase i from their mom's genotype right here. So if I look at the options for what the dad could be, there's a few different options. So it could either be type B blood, completely homozygous type B. It could be heterozygous for type B, or it could actually be AB as well. So those are the three options for what the dad's genotype could be based on what the baby's genotype is. So that is how I do this question. For the next one, I am looking at the same idea, but this time we have different genotypes and different blood types. So for the mom, they have type B blood. So those are the two options for type B. The baby is type O, so it has to be lowercase i, lowercase i. So looking back at the mom's genotypes, it could never be this one. That means that the baby would have to have at least one capital IB, and it doesn't. 
So the answer for mom's blood type has to be this, and she's giving off this lowercase i to her baby. And then options for dad, he has to have at least one lowercase i in order for the baby to get two. So we know that he can be type B blood with the lowercase i, type A blood with the lowercase i, or he could be O. So there's actually multiple different options of blood types that he could be. So that's actually the end of this video. So hopefully it makes sense. We're going to be trying out a bunch of practice questions tomorrow so that we can have time in class to work through these problems together. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. And if not, have a great evening. See you tomorrow.